Hello everyone, today we're gonna start a new series about Valorant solo queue experience. We're gonna talk about the commandments that you should follow, or, you know, you can follow, if you want to make your enjoyment of ranked a little bit better for yourself and for your ranked teammates. Rule number one is, after you die, you say something like this. Jet on A short, 80 damage. And that's it. You zip your mouth after that. No one else wants to listen to anything else. You only need to say where was the player and how much damage you dealt. It's crucial. That's where your death is actually useful to your teammates because you give info how you died so they don't have to look at the minimap and wonder what happened. The amount of damage that you give to your teammates allows them to also specifically tailor their own approach to the duel that it will have with the player that killed you because sometimes if you deal 140 damage there's no point in aiming at the head if you dealt 140 damage an example to someone right maybe he'll finish off with with a utility with a shock dart or something that's it and if you're angry that you lost a duel if you feel that you were unlucky or someone run and gun but if you feel like that just talk to yourself don't do it in front of your teammates if everybody gonna do that your games will be 10 times better instantly. Rule number two, if you are a duelist, like an example, Jet or Phoenix maybe, your job on most of the runs on attack is to be the front line of an attack. You need to communicate with the rest of your team that you're attacking a site. An example, I'm rushing a site, please come with me. Or I'm rushing site, come with me. Be decisive. Tell people what you expect them to be doing with you, right? Because they need to trade you. Your job is not to get kills. Your job is to go on site, create space with the utility. If you have a phoenix, you're doing a wall to cut off an angle. You're doing flashes to go onto a site. You do a molly to check one angle so someone, no one is there, right? You don't have to kill anyone. If you kill someone, that's great. But the job is done already when you do that utility push. Your job is to get the first info, the first contact, and then the support players can trade you. Rule number three. If you are not the duelist, then you need to be prepared to follow your duelist when they're entering the site. If you don't trade them, if they're going onto site and you're just leaving them alone on site, you're not playing the game correctly. You need to go with that duelist. You need to take advantage of the space that he created. You need to kill the person that kills the duelist who is entering the site first. It's of utter importance that you are supporting your duelist. Because if you don't do that, then the entire execute just falls flat on its face. Rule number four is directly tied to rule number two and rule number three. And the rule is, don't be afraid of taking damage or even dying. If you're attacking on site as a duelist and you're entering first, you can't be afraid of dying because your job is to die at some point. If you get a kill before that, that's fantastic. If you're a supporter of that duelist, you can't be afraid of taking damage. That means if your jet dashed on site and you can push through a nanosome, in example, or there's a raise paint shots coming at you, you go forward, you go, don't go backwards. Getting 50 damage from the paint shots doesn't really matter, right? If you support the player that is already on site. If that person dies and has no follow-up to a trade because you were afraid of taking 50 damage and you go back and you leave the jet alone on site, then you're an asshole. Sometimes getting damage is the correct decision. You can only win the round with so many people. And if you lose players left and right because you were uncertain if you should support someone or not, well, then that will not win you the round. Rule number five, don't push alone against an eco, play long range to punish pistols. This applies to both attack and defense, but we're going to talk a little bit more about the defense. So when you're defending a site, you want a pistol round, you bought yourself, let's say, a Spectre, right? And you're playing, let's say, on Icebox on B site. If you're going to push the B long and die alone to an eco because someone gets a lucky shot from a classic and double dinks you, right? And you just straight up die. You give that specter to your opponents who now have five attackers against four defenders. And even though they don't have the equipment, they gained one specter from you and you left huge map control issues for the rest of your teammates. This is why you should never push 
alone on defense. Alone, you should always play long range because you have a better gun. You have a higher chance of winning a duel long range, right? On attack on the other side, you don't want to risk going alone and lurking against an eco because those players on defense against an eco have less fear of dying than you, right? So on attack, you want to group up as five people, an example, and just execute one side. So even if someone from your team dies, no one can retrieve the gun because there's still four other people there. And on round two, if you really want to be a lurker on round two, then you can only do it if you don't have a better gun. Do it with a pistol. I don't really care. Do it with a classic. But don't lurk against an eco if you have a rifle, a SMG, anything that costs more than 500, basically. Because then you're going to try to grief your team. Rule number six. Don't buy a Vandal or a Phantom round two unless you have a full shield or someone will come with you. Essentially, what you want to avoid is something that I mentioned in round five. You don't want to feed your opponents a better gun, especially such a deadly weapon as a Vandal of a Phantom, right? And if you buy even a rifle in round two, you should be buying a Phantom because your opponents don't have full shield. So you still like one tap them with a headshot, right? Whatever the distance is, while maintaining more bullets in the gun and faster fire rate. So it's easier to play against an eco. Anyway, Try not to buy a rifle and a phantom on round two, and there are a few reasons for that. If you ever play alone on an angle and you lose that gun, it's ultimately super punishing for you when it comes to the economy, super punishing for your teammates on that round, losing map control and losing super valuable gun that just gives the odds of winning that round to your opponents, right? And even if you buy a gun like that on round two, always be next to your teammates. There's also another strategy that you can do when you have to buy a Vandal or a Fanta or something. What you can try to do to try to build up an economy because that's the goal of buying a, a Vandal or, or, or a Phantom round two, right? You want to avoid rebuying guns later on. So you want to increase the odds of winning at round three, basically save cash. You can do that in the example of your dual queue when he buys a full shield and you drop him essentially the better gun. So you exchange guns because one player will, for example, have 3.3k, right? And the other one will have 3.1k, an example. So he buys, the guy that has 3.1k, an example, buys a full shield, right? You buy small shield and a Vandal or a Phantom, preferably Phantom. You drop the Phantom to the, your teammate and he drops you back something cheaper. Essentially, you make one player super tanky with the better gun to increase his odds of surviving the round while you still have something that you bought, right? I can understand why you're not maybe want to do that with randoms, but with your dual queue, I think that's a valid strategy in the new economical system of uh, Valorant that will benefit you and your teammates on round two. Thank you for watching. We're going to see each other during the next video, which will be coming up soon. You know what to do. You, you, you can leave a comment and stuff like that. I'm not going to try to convince you, but if you would like to have a conversation with me, you can leave a comment. I will definitely answer.